All right, we are going to have some fun with DOSBox. Um, let's see. So I managed to get my hands on some utilities since I did the last one of these. And let's take a look at what we got. All right. Specifically, I was after text editors to replace the inbuilt text editor for DOS, which is not present in DOSBox. And we'll go ahead and start with what I like the most. Um, I got this program, pEdit. And I got this on my other computer um, late one night. And I am a text file. And I liked it. So I sought it out again to use it here. And what I found was a completely different version. So if, you, uh, if you're interested in looking up pEdit, um, I'm hoping to find a version number here, but I don't think that's going to be the case. That's something. <laughs> that's as close as it's going to come, I guess. Uh, system clock in the lower right-hand corner is accurate, which is kind of neat. I guess. Uh, quit. Yeah, okay. And it puts the command prompt in the middle to be cute, I guess, for some reason. All right, so that is a text editor. Um, here's the reason why I dig that, all right? Let's, uh, see. So if we look at our directory, texts. There is a website, like Text World or something like that. So, so, I'll put it in the description here. But there's a website that has over a terabyte of text files. And I'm going to say that again because I think it bears repeating. A terabyte of just text. Okay, and a lot of them were texts that were distributed in the bulletin board system days and things of that nature. Um, and it's it, there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. So I got some of those texts here, uh, texts of various sizes. Okay, um, you'll see t uh, the very first one, 2010.txt. It's all numbers. That is the complete ed edition of uh, 20,000 leagues onto the sea by Jules Verne as published by the Gutenberg project. So a free public domain .txt file, but it has that whole novel in it. So that's a sizable, let's see if it'll show me the sizes. That's just off the page. Yeah, there you go. There you go, I think that's the biggest file in the directory too, at uh, five, uh, 593,000 bytes. Yeah, that's a big one. Okay, so that said, here's the thing. I can no longer do, well, we'll look at the very bottom ones, the zork.soul. Um, in the olden days, I could do edit zork1.soul, which will not work here. And what really bothers me about DOSBox, the more I use it, is the fact that it says illegal command to edit here. It should read bad command or file name. That's what it should read. That's what DOS would always read whenever you missed and it kind of bothers me now that I, that it doesn't I didn't notice really notice so much before but now it kind of bugs me all right so I can do pet it uh, ped dot exe and then feed the file in as an argument that way zork one dot soul all right so now we're in pet it and we've got we, we we've got the solution to zork one which, by the way, not as thrilling a file as I thought it'd be, because it's just exactly the inputs that you type in. Yeah, uh, you know, whatever. All right, so one of the downfalls, and this is kind of a major downfall of the Pettit uh, program. Okay, so, so let's do this one more time. Instead of doing Zork, we're going to do that 20,000 leagues file, okay? Give it a second to try and load the file. And I believe the last, yeah, not enough memory free to load the file. It, it bombs out. It can't, can't quite handle it. All right. So that's the problem with, with Pettit. Um, it's, it's simple and it's, it's, it's smooth text editing. What I expected more or less WordStar 4 to be when I tried it. I was not at all expecting WordStar 4 to be as clunky as it was. Um, but there is another one I got very similar to that. Let's see. New. Uh, there it is. Wait, 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 wait. New. Here's some new things I got. 
uh, when I got Windows 1.03, but I can't. I haven't quite figured out how to get a working copy in in DOSBox. And then that bottom one is WordPerfect 5.1. Um, let's look at the top one. CD uh, Captain Blackbeard version 266. Captain. All right. Very similar to. Um, very similar to to Pettit. A couple of things I want to draw your attention to. This can handle big files, whereas Pettit can't. Um, one problem with this program is if you call this from another directory, uh, it will leave behind a junk file in, uh, um, from the place you called it from. Mm. That's what stops this from being my main my main uh, text editor. But apart from that, it's good. It can handle a full. I mean, it can handle twenty thousand leagues under the sea, just fine. And uh, if I were to copy twenty thousand leagues into into the directory, let's check this out. All right, then it would load it up. Like, look at this. There's bookmarks and stuff. Like, this is clearly better suited for for handling big files. I want to save <laughs> options run run now wait a second boys and girls how are you gonna run this do dot do command dos window okay so I guess it's just for compiling batchers Yeah, that's that's the contents of the of the the folder. All right, I'm sliding off track here. So here's here's the problem with Captain Blackbeard. Right, say C, C D back. If we go back to the text file, D I R slash P. Take a look at the very top, uh, the very top directory. Cap back. I didn't put that there. What is that? Cap back? Huh? It's a backup of twenty thousand leagues under the sea. I loaded it up in in um, uh, in Blackbeard, and that appears as a backup. It created this all all on its own. Um, now imagine I can't imagine uh, this happening. You know, way back in the day, when. Um, 593,000 bytes was a good bit of memory and it would just it would just drop <laughs> drop that there I well on the other hand you could argue it probably wouldn't have done that back in the day mm. because people would have just used edit to look at their files okay point taken very weird place I'm at trying to fill holes that just DOS natively took care of um, all right Come on now. <laughs> Last one. Okay. This one baffled me. Okay. This is the the most minimalistic interface of all of the text editors. This is word perfect. This was my father's uh um word processor of choice in the Windows 3.1 days. He had he would get these these 20 disk sets of WordPerfect and I remember him getting magazines that had diskettes in them that that had WordPerfect tools like plugins and stuff. Um, and that's where that's where he'd get plugins and mods and things like that and extensions. Stuff that we would just, you know, download right out of our browser today. Now this is not a simple program. Um, if I can figure out where the help button is, one of the function keys is search F2. Yep, file not not found. F1 on delete. F there uh, F3. From 1988, it was just flashed there. Let's see if I can get back to it. All right, 
F2. No. Oh, my goodness. There we go. October 7th, 1988. WordPerfect 5.0. And I can press letters and get features. Look at all these. Just shortcut keys, right? Word searches, default codes, uh, quality of text, graphics, uh, reassign keys, add password, drop back to Word Perfect 2.4.2 uh, formatting, however that was handled. Um, I don't remember how to leave this program, which i seen. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I believe it was F7. Yeah, quit Word Perfect F7. So that's Word Perfect, and as soon as I can get out of this, this help screen, Whoa! Look at that. Um, can we just can we just leave? Does the mouse function? It does not. Yes, it does. Save document. No. Exit Word uh, Word Perfect. Yes, that's Word Perfect. I was not a fan of Word Perfect. <laughs> um, but that is the thing that exists, and had a fair share of popularity back in the day. Um, and I'm going to call that it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, those are some word processors from the MS-DOS era that I was able to get my hands on. Speaking of MS-DOS era, one last side note, I guess, before we close the video. Uh, let's take a look at Pettit. Look at the date. Wait, oh, this is 1990. That's why it's different from the one on my other laptop. The one on my laptop is, is dated 1993. 1990. Look at that, guys. Okay. Um, uh, ped.exe. Let's see the ped doc. Just before we close, guys. Hang on a little bit longer. File to load. Full screen editor with some pull downs. It's a shareware. <laughs> in order to use in professional environment, it must be registered. Don't use it without it being registered, guys. Promise. No crossing your fingers, okay? <laughs> Alright, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.